What I want to do for you now is the example of the electric field due to a continuous charge distribution. We talked about the electric field of a point charge in class. Uh, that's um, given here. Um, and if I have more than one point charge, then what I do is the vector sum of the electric fields due to all those point charges at a given point. So that is to say, each of the point charges qi are a distance ri from the point in question. And the direction of the electric field points away from qi if qi is positive. It points towards qi if qi is negative. So depending on where the charges qi are placed, you calculate each electric field and then you add those up as vectors at the point that you're looking at. Now, if I have not a series of point charges, but a continuous charge distribution, this is going to be very similar. And instead of charge qi, you will have an infinitesimally small charge, which I'll call dqi. And because this now becomes an infinite sum of infinitesimal quantities, instead of a sum, I will have an integral, okay, where the infinitesimal charge is dq here. Um, and I'm integrating over all these charges, basically doing an infinite sum of the vector field contributions of all of these charges. And this sum is a vector sum once again. Okay, so uh, to see how this works, First of all, let's talk about how you define that element of charge dq. Let's begin with a simple case, that of a line charge. So I have a charge uniformly distributed along a line. So if I have total charge q distributed along a line of length l, I can define a charge per unit length, which is called the line charge density lambda, which is capital Q over L, total charge over the length of the line. dq then my little element of charge, if my element of length is dx, dx is just my charge per unit length times dx, or if you like, capital Q over L, which is lambda times dx. Then the next thing to do is to calculate the electric field due to each of these charges, dq, and you say that in the electric field is then going to go something like this an integral over these electric field contributions due to all the charges dq. Let's do an example of this. Um, this is an example that's done in your book. It's that of a uniformly charged finite char uh, line of charge. And we want to look at the field at a point some distance from that charge. Let's begin. Let's say the line has length 2a using the notation in your book. And let's place the origin of our coordinate system in the center of this line over here. So this is A and this. Now we want to calculate the field. Let's pick an element of charge. Let's say this one. And let's calculate the field it produces at some point along the x-axis. So this, this charge is dq. And if this has infinitesimal length dy, then it's charge per unit length times dy. dq produces an electric field dE over here that points in this direction. Um, and the magnitude of this electric field dE is going to be k dQ over r squared, where r is this length over here. Okay, if this point is located a distance x along the x-axis and a distance y along the y, axis what I have is that r squared is just x squared plus y squared. So this is k dq over x squared plus y squared. dq is lambda dy. Lambda, if my line of length 2a has total charge q, lambda is just q over 2a. And we'll keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. For now, let's continue losing lambda, so then dE at this point is going to be k lambda dy over x squared plus y squared. Okay, but remember this is a vector that points in the direction shown. Let me look at, to use a little ideas of symmetry, let's look at a element of charge located symmetrically opposite along the y-axis over here. 
and let's calculate the field this produces at that same point. Now by symmetry, this is also distance r because we are taking the distance y. So this is a distance y from the origin. This is a distance y on the other side, in the negative side of the origin. So this r is the same, therefore dE at this point is the same, but it points in a different direction. So now let me add these two as vectors, and divide each into an x component and a y component, y component for this one and an x component for this, but the two x components I'll place end to end and add. So the y components are going to cancel and the x components are going to add. So I should get a net electric field vector in this direction. Okay. What will be the magnitude of this electric field vector? It will be twice the magnitude of the x components of each of these. So dEx, finally, I should be able to write as 2 times dE times cosine of alpha, where alpha is this angle. Oh, in other words, that angle. So the x component of these fields is d equals alpha. Both of them make a contribution. So now this is my net electric field, this vector over here pointing in the x direction. I've defined dE already. All that I need to do now is define cos alpha. So let me write cos alpha in this triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's just x over r. That is to say x over square root of x squared plus y squared. Now remember I've used two elements on either side of the line. This is the electric field contribution of just these two elements. But what I want is the electric field contribution of the whole line, so I need to integrate. But because I'm using two symmetrically based points and pairing them, I really only need to integrate from here to here. So my net electric field in the x direction, Ex, should be integral of dEx, which is the integral from this point 0 to this point, which is a, 0 to a, of this whole expression, so 2 times k times dq, which is lambda dy times the cosine of alpha x, and the, I have one power of x squared plus y squared from here, and I have another half power from that, so that's going to be x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. So this is the integral I need to do. If I were to pull out of the integral all the things that are constant, the integration variable you can see is uh, dy over here. Right? This is my integration variable. So if I pull out things that are not functions of dy, I get ex is equal to 2k lambda x integral 0 to a of dy over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Now how do you do this integral? This is similar to the ones I had given you in the math review. You can use trigonometric substitution. I won't go over that just now. I can go over that separately. But if you were to do this, you would find that this integral, right, uh, let me use a different color, is equal to y over x squared square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so what I get now is ex is 2k lambda x y y over x squared square root of x squared plus y squared when y goes from 0 to a, so I have to evaluate this between y equals a and y equals 0. When y is equal to 0, this is 0. When y is equal to a, I get 
2 k 1 power of x is going to cancel so 2 k lambda a over x square root of x squared plus a squared now remembering that um, lambda is basically q over 2a i can write this in terms of q so this is also uh, written as k q over x square root of x squared plus x squared and this is in the x direction okay it's e x so this is the electric field produced by a finite line segment at a distance x from its center the segment has length 2a now what happens if this is an infinite suppose i had an infinite line that is to say what is the limiting value of this so we want to find the limiting value of e x as a goes to infinity let me go back to this version of the expression so I want to find the limiting value as a goes to infinity of 2 k lambda a over x over x squared plus a squared. Let me factor out 1 power of a. So I can write this as limiting value a goes to infinity of 2k lambda a over x times a times square root of x squared over a squared plus 1 whole thing squared root. Now this a cancels. In this expression when a goes to infinity this goes to 0. So finally what I would get is when the limit a goes to infinity ex so the electric field of an infinite line would go as 2k lambda over x. So you can see that the electric field of an infinite line depends on how far you are from the line and it depends on the line charge density lambda. Okay, it's always going to point perpendicular to the line in the x direction.